it'll basically just shut down the audio if it detects a problem where it's gonna go meep, 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 meep. it can save your hardware it can save your ears just turn it on If you've been using GarageBand for a while, you'd know that we've got a bunch of settings in here. But did you know we have even more advanced settings that we can play around with? We're here in GarageBand in our main screen. If we click or tap in the top right on the settings icon here, here's all your standard settings. You can adjust your metronome and your count in. There's a heap of other videos, by the way, uh, that are on the channel here. In the GarageBand Essentials playlist is a good place to start. You can adjust your tempo. So at the moment, it's 79 because that's a great year to be born. So 79, we've got our time signature here between four four three four and six eight you've got your key signature you can change from c major to any major or minor key and you can set your follow song key we now have the time ruler hooray so uh, i know a lot of folks have been asking for this in the latest version you can actually see the time instead of the bars that's a feature that everyone's been wanting you can choose to fade out your track at the end I don't use this. I use a manual fade out using automation. Once again, uh, there'll be a video that you can check out. Just search Pete John's automation fade or something like that. You'll find it. <laughs> We've got the notepad here that you can go to. We've got jam session, which I don't use. Dan Baker did a video on this recently, which looked pretty cool. I need to check that one out in more detail. We can restore purchases. There's only really one purchase. Uh, it's the red pack that if you were lucky enough to get back in the day, I don't have it. You got your help file there, but... We've got some advanced settings here. So let's jump in and take a look at what the advanced settings do. If we tap on that one, we have multi-track recording. So this allows you to actually record on more than one channel at once. Now, don't get too excited because if you've only got a single channel interface, you can still only record one microphone or one guitar, but it means that you can actually set up and record on two channels at once, even without having a two channel interface connected. So how that works is if we're out here on our tracks, so we have these two tracks, we wanted to record that one and this one, we tap the record button there's your problem. If you've only got a one channel interface, you're going to get that. But what if you wanted to record, say, an audio track and a MIDI track? Well, look, we can actually record both of them together. And you can even choose which one, whether you are monitoring your audio or not. So if you've always wanted to play around with multi-track, you don't have a multi-track interface yet, you can go into your advanced settings and turn it on. 24-bit audio resolution. Turn this on. No, seriously, stop this video right now, hit pause, go and turn this on right now. Because by default, GarageBand has 16-bit audio. And uh, in version 2.3, I think it was, they updated that to 24-bit audio resolution. Now, 24-bit is just 8 bits better, right? It gives you more of a dynamic range. It gives you better quality audio. Yes, it does use a third more disk space, but for the quality, instead of, you know, if you're going to have a 30 megabyte WAV file for your file or a 40 megabyte WAV file, but you're going to get much better quality for free, just turn it on. Turn it on, 24-bit resolution. Running background. This means that I can run GarageBand. So if I play my GarageBand track here, I can actually switch between apps. And I want to jump over to Audio Share. Or I want to jump over to the App Store. I can do that. I can go to the App Store. And I can be doing other things while GarageBand is still playing. That's super handy. Yeah? So running background mode, I turn it on. If you're running out of resources or it causes glitches, don't do that. Use with music apps. So this one, switch on to optimize GarageBand performance for use with other music apps. You may notice a delay when playing some touch instruments. If you don't need, if you don't have this on and nothing's gone wrong, don't turn it on. <laughs> turn it on if you think you need to, but don't worry so much about it. Um, Bluetooth MIDI devices. If you have Bluetooth MIDI devices, you can connect them there. You can see in the past, I have had Bluetooth MIDI devices. I'm no longer using any of those. I, not that I don't recommend Bluetooth MIDI devices, but having a wired connection has always made me a lot more comfortable than wireless. When it comes to music, wireless headphones, wireless instruments, you're always just going to get a little bit more lag or delay, and I don't tend to use it. And setting your MIDI clock. So if you're using GarageBand and you want to uh, transmit your MIDI clock out to other apps, when it's connected, you can turn that on and that will do. I don't tend to use many other apps, so I leave it off. If you need to turn it on, turn it on. And you might think that is all, but that is not all. There is yet another place where we can dive in. I'm going to come over here because I've got to jump to my settings real quick. I want to make sure I'm not displaying anything that I shouldn't here. I think we're good. So I've gone to settings. So on my iPad or on your iPad, go to settings like I am here. And here's all your de standard default settings. If you scroll down here on the left, you'll notice that you have settings that are specific for each of the apps you have installed on your iPad or iPhone. And one of those is this one, GarageBand. So what can we do if we tap on GarageBand? Now, before you ask, I have no idea why these settings are here and half the settings are actually in the app. 
probably just to confuse people. I don't know. Anyway, we can control a bunch of other things. Up here, we can allow GarageBand to access Bluetooth or our camera, Siri and search, notifications, which I have off, and your document storage. Now, the only really important one here is document storage. I would always make sure that document storage is set to iCloud Drive. Uh, it would be nice to be able to use something like Audio Share or uh, yeah, Google Drive or Dropbox. It just doesn't integrate. I've had too many errors, too many issues, too many people running into problems. And if you have it on my iPad, well, then it's not going to automatically back up. So if you lose a project, you've lost a project. If, it's, if, it, if you drop your iPhone in the toilet, because, hey, we've all been there, then you could potentially lose all of the projects that you've been working on. So iCloud Drive is where it's at and where I recommend you store your documents. You've then got all of our GarageBand settings down here. So check some of these out. We've got knob gestures. Yeah. How do you like to twiddle your knobs? Well, it's a personal thing, uh, but I leave this on automatic, which means that if it's a knob, that it makes sense to just be up and down or left and right. It's that way. If you like to make sure you always do a circular thing, which means that if you've got a knob, you tap it and you drag in a circular fashion like that, that's, you can put circular on. Linear just means if it's a circular knob, you just tap it and drag to the right and it will turn that knob circularly to the right. So if you're finding that you're having trouble managing your knobs, you can come in here and change your knob gestures. All right, crosstalk protection. This one's important. I leave this on because if you start connecting up guitars and instruments and you are getting some sort of crosstalk or some feedback loops or things going on, then I suggest turning this one on because that can protect you. It'll basically just shut down the audio if it detects a problem where it's going to go. Meep, 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 meep. It can save your hardware. It can save your ears. Just turn it on. Automatic recording length. So we can turn this on. This is handy. If you're bringing a backing track into GarageBand or you're bringing an audio file, instead of it cutting it off at eight bars, like it will do, you can turn this on and it won't. I've got it off just because I like to control things. I'll, I'll just adjust that, but it can be a handy one to have on. MPE controllers. You can use GarageBand with MIDI controllers supporting MPE, MIDI polyphonic expression. If you have a MIDI controller with polyphonic expression, and I do, so maybe I should probably have this on. <laughs> don't know why. Amazing. Sometimes you do these things and yeah, you don't even realize what you're doing. Uh, so turn that one on. Keyboard note labels. This is pretty cool. Without this on, uh, will, it, will it adjust even though I'm running it? We'll come over here. So this is where when you're in your keyboard instrument like this, yeah, so you see how we have, we don't have the note labels on there. If you want to know what each one of these notes are, guess what? Whoop. We can swipe over here. We can turn... Oh, we've got to go back in. Garage band. Keyboard note labels. There we go. So then we can whoop, come up here, go back, and like magic, check that out. We've got all of our note labels ready to go. So, so you're like, oh no, I don't know where my F sharp is. Yeah, now you do. You can get your F sharp without a problem. So that's a handy one. One that I'd always suggest turning on, especially if you're learning instruments or you're new to music in general, turn it on. Uh, coming on down, only got a couple left to go. Enable iOS effect plugins. You want to turn this on because this gives you, turn that on, then you get addition. You get in addition to your regular plugins and effects in here, you actually get a whole bunch more. Look at this. You get all of these Hang on, down the bottom, you get all of these orange ones. You get 15 Apple AU plugins. And the final one here, the final one that we have here is to reset GarageBand. So if your GarageBand is crashing, if you're ever finding that GarageBand will not run, you can use this one. So I won't turn it on here. It won't affect any of your projects, but it will affect some of your settings. So some of these other settings that we had in here and some of the settings I showed you at the start of this section, uh, it will affect those. But if it's not running, you kind of need to try it anyway. So you turn that on, you run GarageBand. The first time it reruns, it basically does a factory default restart. And if you're stuck in something or if your GarageBand won't run, reset GarageBand, you'll be good to go. That is uh, that is all of the settings. Every setting here in GarageBand, every setting you wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask. So now you can get your GarageBand set up and running super, super smooth here on iOS.